Now I'm pleased to say we're joined in the studio by Rod Ellingworth, the performance manager of the Team Sky cycling team and also the elite men's road manager at British Cycling. Well, thanks very much for joining us in the studio. Let's talk about the new book <coughs> that you've got out called Project Rainbow. Tell us yep. why it's called that. Um, well, I think that was basically named uh, as a journalist who actually called the project that in an article. And we just thought that that looked pretty good, you know, and, and um, you know, it fitted well with the jersey and, <clears throat> and everything else that we were doing, so, yeah. You brought so many riders through, haven't you? Let's, let's pick up a few of them. Yeah. Let's talk about Mark Cavendish, shall mm. we? Tell us about how you first met him and how you got involved in coaching him. Yeah, um, I first met Mark, I think it was about 2003, um, when he was a junior cyclist. And... There was, a, there was an incident um, on the track where he's right, riding in the national championships and he fell off and, and he, he fell really heavy uh, and he got straight back up and got back on his bike and I just thought, you know, there's something in that. He, he, he got, he's got some guts, you know, and, uh, you know, so that was when I first met Mark and, I mean, I, I started working with him because he, he, he joined the academy programme with myself. Um, you know, straight away, I think that we, we sort of got a bond together. Uh, he believed in what I was telling him and, you know, um, I just wanted to do a good job at the time, so it, it fitted well, really. You just mentioned the uh, academy. What yeah. was your plan behind that? Well, you know, um, I, I felt like at the time at British Cycling, it, it was very numbers-driven, and, and um, there was a lot of sports science yeah. going behind it, and, and a lot of the riders didn't have the, the tactics and the, the skills that were needed. Um, so that was why we changed it, really. And, and through a lot of discussions with a lot of other people, I was fortunate to put the programme together, and and started off, you know, and, and, and we, we sort of got a new group of riders together, um, not knowing that they would be as successful as they actually have become, you know, so it was, it was good just to get them young lads in and do it in a different way to what it had been done the previous ten years. So you see Mark Cavendish fall on his off his bike, pick himself up, you know mm. he's either a nutter or very tenacious or, or possibly <laughs> both. He both. So, so how, how do you go about getting that raw talent and honing it to, to become a champion? Uh, I think, you know, um, we're pretty lucky at British Cycling. We've got a really good coaching structure um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of help to, you know, you can get a lot of um, guidance from, from people outside of the, the Federation as well, so like Steve Peters, um, Nigel Mitchell who's the nutritionist. So there's lots of different people who, who get involved with what we do. Um, and we put this programme together, the riders join the programme. Um, and we just put them through a lot of hard work. That's basically what I did. I just gave them a lot of hard work. Discipline was a massive thing. A group of 18-year-old lads together. Mm. Um, you know, I, I sort of said it. I, I tried to run it like the army. Um, keep them, keep them, you know, on track all the time. You know, and that, I think that's a big key to to their success. So that's how you hone their talents. Mm. You've, you've worked with Cavendish and many talented British riders. How do you prepare them before the actual races? I think the that's sort of trying to think about challenges ahead of them really um, and if you can get them thinking what, what's going to be their biggest challenge uh, before an event um, that, that's got to be the, the key thing really um, because if they go into something and they don't know and, and they, they come against this challenge and they have, they're not prepared for it then, you, then you're in trouble um, so if they're sort of they're prepared uh, they know what what, what they're going to do if they hit this challenge, they go left or they go right, then they're going to know, you know, they've got a good decision ahead of them. I've watched plenty of documentaries with you in it as, as, as part of this phenomena that is now British Cycling and Team Sky. And yeah. you always seem to be kind of joking pally with them as well, but you said you were like an army. So how yeah. do you draw the line between being the, the, the major general and being their mate? Can yeah. you draw, the, can you be both? Um, well, I think that the way you, you've got to set your rules and your standards early on, and I think I was fortunate again to be able to do that. Um, set your rules with the consequences, and the lads know the line. Um, I think you know we spend a lot of time together on the road, so you do get to know people very well. Um, I think over the years, people like Mark have got to know myself well, but I still think there's a line there. There's a professional job I have to do, you know, um, and and I I sort of feel quite proud that I, I can keep that line, you know. Um, and the lads know, they know the line as well, and, and they take you right up to the line. <laughs> they um, don't step over it. <laughs> but they, yeah, they don't step over, yeah. No British yeah. riders won the world title since 1965. How did you go about <coughs> plotting victory in 2011 for Cavendish? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, with, with such a bunch of talented riders, it, it, it was actually quite easy in a way. Um, I think it was just putting it all together, that's what I did. We just sort of glued all these little parts. At, at the time, 
from sort of early 2000, they weren't together. There was a lot of people doing their own things in different pockets around the world. And <clears throat> for me, it was just getting them together, um, getting them to believe in Mark, which was quite easy again because he was world class at what he was doing. And, and also Mark saying to me as a 17 year old, I want to be world road race champion. And our jobs really are to follow their dreams, you know, um, and to make it happen for them. So just pulling it together, getting them together on training camps, uh, explaining again, what, what, what's the journey like ahead of us? Um, and just <clears throat> my job was to get them on the line with the right frame of mind, all thinking the same thing. And, and you know, they pulled off a great result. Yeah, it worked. Such is the stable of stars that have, that have come through. They're, they're going to take their place amongst the pantheon of, of all-time greats. Yeah. Eddie Merckx's record in the Tour de France as far as stage wins yes, for yeah. Cavendish, that's in his sights. Was that another target and will he, will he get there? I think, um, I don't think it was a target Mark had thought about years ago, but certainly now it's, it's, it's a definite target that he would like to do. He, I mean, Mark did say to me a few years back he, he doesn't want to um, be just remembered for winning a few small races, he wants to be remembered for winning a lot of bike races and this is, you know, having the record number of stage wins in the Tour de France is obviously a, a huge marker um, and I think he can do it, definitely, yeah. So you talked about how you forged the relationships with the riders, were you disappointed when he left Team Sky? Yeah, I personally I was, yeah, yeah, you know, I, um, I felt like I'd done quite a lot of work getting, getting him to the team and um, yeah, it was a great disappointment that he left the team. Um, but I understand why he did, you know, and, and we, we, you know, sometimes you have to move on and sometimes things don't quite work out, you know. Um, so I think, you know, he, he's moved on and, and I'd, you know, yeah, he's, he's doing well there, so good luck to him. The other connection between Team GB and, and Team Sky is Sir now, Dave Brailsford. <laughs> yes. What's he like to work with? Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you have to say yeah, that. Boss, yeah. <laughs> no, no, he's good. I mean, you know, um, uh, you, you know, the guy works so hard. Dave is a proper grafter. Um, he leads in that aspect, so you know you can't ever, you know, you can always know Dave's at work every day, 24/7. Um, and and you know I enjoy working with him. To be honest, he works us really, really hard. He pushes us hard, both Team GP and and Team Sky. Um, what he did last year, I think, was pretty incredible. You know, and I was asked asked last night if did, can he continue to do both jobs, and I was like, well, if he did what he did last year, of course he can. You know. But his work ethic, is that what inspires your work ethic? And c can you keep that level up for, f over the years, or is there inevitable? I think we, we all get older, and I think, you know, um, how long for, I don't, I don't actually know. But, yeah, you know, but, yeah, Dave definitely inspires everybody around him, I think, with his work ethic, yeah. And, and the, you know, every sport is, is hard, and, and we all believe our sport is the hardest, but um, work ethic and the roll-your-sleeves-up attitude is what you have to have, I think. You certainly do. Well, tell us about Chris Froome. Can he dominate the Tour de France for a sustained period, do you think? Yeah, you know, I think Chris is, um, he's done a great job the last couple of years and, and I think his win this year just proved that, you know, he is um, a, a, a fantastic Tour de France rider. I think um, with riders like Nibali now going to say he's definitely riding the Tour, I think we're going to have a great race on our hands next year. Um, but I think Chris can cont continue to win for sure. So where does Sir Bradley Wiggins fit into all of this? Lots been made of the relationship between Froome <coughs> and Wiggins. What's your yeah. take on it? And what, what's the future for, for Sir Bradley Wiggins now? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I haven't actually spoken to Bradley on it personally. Um, but, I, you know, I think we, we could see Brad on the, on the start line of the tour next year, which is a, a goal for the team, you know. Um, we we want to put the best nine riders on the line, and for sure, Bradley in, in good shape can be on the start line. So, you know, and I think, <coughs> excuse me, he, you know, he, he aimed for the Tour de France, uh, for the Giro d'Italia last year, um, and not particularly the Tour. So, you know, I think we've got to get his goals for next year and then we'll plan from there, really. Is, is, is it plausible, though, for him to effectively be a domestique, though, for, for Froome? Absolutely, yeah. There's no reason why not, you know. Um, I, I think if, uh, you know, every, it is quite an interesting sport in that way that you know you have nine bike riders on the start line and only one person can win and the other guys don't really get the accolade or you know the success in that way um, so it is a difficult one and when you have a team of winners so you put two great champions like Bradley and, and Chris together it, it is a challenge um, but you know they're working on it and I think Bradley can do it for sure.